Hello there, my name is Bloody Meow, and welcome to another Let's Play. This time we have Environmental Station Alpha. And let me just start introducing this game on how the developer describes this game in Steam with the description simply saying, Explore an abandoned space station in this explorative action platformer. A little bit of paraphrasing there, but that's it. That's what the description of this game is. And when you think about that, well, it seems like, well, what kind of surprises would this be? It kind of looks like uh, a retro Metroid looking clone. And that is that is correct. But let me say there's a lot more mm, depth in here than one might expect. And this game really just surprised me in, in many ways. And I want to say that I've been through this game, all gone through all of its secrets. And that's the last time I'm going to tell you that. Because right now, you and I, we're uh, this little robot exploring this abandoned space station, trying to see what went wrong. So let's continue and figure it out. Okay, and something I really enjoy about this game is that just as soon as you start, it throws you right into a boss fight. So it, it, this game is a little bit on the steeper side of difficulties, and I enjoy it for that reason. I think it's a, a perfect difficulty for a game like this. And uh, But now, we are this robot. We just turned on some backup generator, and uh, we'll see what we can do here to see if we can find some communications of some sort. So... And that's it. You're, no more communication. We're totally isolated. We're this robot by ourselves. These scientists have sent us here. And we just dropped down this huge shaft chasm of, of sorts. And that's it. They can't hear us anymore. And I like how the text is jittering to kind of just display that. So, And as we enter the first proper area of the game, we hear this awesome first area music. So I'm going to let it play out for a little bit, as we usually do for Metroid-style games. And uh, let's read up what's going on here. A save, bu a save bar here. Save capsule, I guess. Refill hit points and save your game. No questions asked. It's nice. So let's explore. And as you can see already, we're seeing some utility gates happening. We need level security two access required to get through that gate. And uh, well, we found like kind of like just a random room here with nothing in it. Usually, I think there might be a secret in here. Um, and you can say that it looks like there's just like a smiley face in the background. It's kind of funny, but uh, it looks like there's nothing here. But 
already we have to kind of turn around. We know we could have went left or right, and it looks like we just exhausted our options on the right side. And that's how a Metroid game works. If, for those who are not familiar, this is kind of how it works. You explore blind, and you find out places to go, and and you learn things. Like, you learn now that that's some sort of uh, an enemy or something that uh, shocks you or hurts you, and it takes two hit points off. And we only have a very small amount of hit points, as you can see on the pinkish bar down the bottom left corner there. So we can only get hit um, a few more times, but, you know, we'll see what we can do. Nothing wrong getting taking a little damage, but look. Bam! Full, helps and full, hip, full, hips, full hit points and saved. So, right, it seems like we need a level of security too. So, left is the only option we can go, and like I said, this music, awesome. Great stuff. A good worthy uh, first area. Not quite the same way of how Castlevania does things, but this is not... Even though this is called a Metroidvania, I think it's more just the genre of it. But it's it's a Metroid game more than a, a Vania game at all. It's, it's a Metroid game, like, through and through, and I really appreciate it. So up here, we see some pink, weird, sporadic blocks in this, these gold blocks. And it looks like we can't do anything up here. So keep that in mind. That's another thing about this game. You try to keep... Try to start creating a uh, mental map in your head. Um, but you also have a real map, which is uh, on the start menu here, and you can check out a map, and you can go and see particular things, like the spaceship that we started in, and then we fought this Class C Guardian, and we fell down this shaft. So you can see connectors in, in, um, in different places and things you didn't explore. The map's very simplistic, but works excellent for the game. And really, you only have um, the, 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 the compass coordinate... Attack. So you just up, left, right, down. And you can shoot while you're jumping. You can shoot downwards while you're sitting. And your little blaster goes through walls. So you can shoot and pierce through enemies. That's not... That's the seat. You can... Well, obviously... It did. Oh! Dang! Got a little trap there. But yeah, you um, need to actually be able to shoot through walls most of the time. Alright, so we got right and left again. And already we've uh, fallen down, and so we're kind of trapped down here. So let's see what's left here. This is all about the game is exploring. That's the beauty of this game. So we've got like some sort of a cactus object, maybe like a rock, but we can't really get anywhere. And there's a monitor up there. You can get some more information, but we can't reach this. So we need some sort of double jump or, or something to that effect. And what I'm kind of narrating is how my mind processed this when I first played this game. That's kind of how I'm playing it, because... I just couldn't... I, I was hooked on this game. It was just incredible. So, already one little puzzle here. It looks like I already uh, can't go any further because I only have so much of a jump. So, But I know these blocks break. So, to solve this puzzle, we just need to be able to have like a stepping stone of sorts. And, um... Just like that. Alright, and... A robot can swim. There's no oxygen problem, so that's a nice thing. Uh, a lot of times, oxygen meters in, in uh, games are rather just tedious and annoying. We're a robot, so we're good for that. We don't. We have our own life support systems, and uh, we got these. Uh, what are these? Gamers, beamers, Ramaya, very Metroid-esque. And X marks the spot, perhaps. I'm not sure. That's uh, a little interesting there. Anything in this game that looks funny might be something. That's how this game works. So. You know, try to keep a mental note of interesting things you see. But this looks like a big computer. Maybe this is a uh, security computer online. Yeah. Access level 2 granted. Don't mind if I do. We got an okay for it, too. And also, you see this green biomass dripping. So you know there's also an organic life form here. It's not just a spaceship and environmental station. It's a, it's a living, breathing spaceship with that... If you watch the title, it's been silent for decades. So that could be, I think it could be 30, 40 years. It's hard to say. Maybe even 50. And yeah, access level 2 granted, correct? Yes. So that means that computer where we were blocked by level 2 before on the first right direction is now open. Okay. All right. We don't want to drop down there. That looks a little creepy. <laughs> Looks a little dangerous with our 10 hit points. And if you see, if you jump here and jump to this ledge, that thing's going to hop at us, hit us, knock us down there, and we're in trouble. So you got to try to realize what's going to come up. And I think he's going to jump. So we're just going to hold left and just walk under him. I think that's, our, I think that's what we're going to try to do. Let's see it. Yep. Yep. See? If you were to try to jump or try to shoot it and not do anything, it would have knocked you over. And that's excellent. So we know that that block right there will drop us down. But uh, we also have this new type of block. So we have a pink 
sporadic block, we have a yellow gold block, and now we have this uh, checkered red block. So we already have three different utility gates that we don't know what they're in, what's involved there. And it's all in the first area. And another point about this game is that this game is actually very small, but it's extremely dense. They use every single available asset of the map. It's, it's, it's a rather impressive. It's very interconnected, just as what you would expect from a Metroid game. And I love the instantaneous save points. It just really is quite helpful. Okay, so now we have the level two access. So we should be able to uh, open this. Indeed. All right, so yeah, we're, we're, we're further ahead. Excellent. And down the mine shaft we go, and um, I think we can still come back up, right? Okay, so we're not we're not uh, gated yet, vertically. We're not vertically challenged quite yet, and we're in the new area. And this kind of bronzes copper area. This we saw this when we got to the X mark the spot room when we uh, opened up the level two access. So we can see that maybe that connects to that room at some point, and um, I would say sure enough, that's probably the case, but. Just keep exploring, and um, we'll, we'll see this. Let's see over here. Is that like, can we, uh, we haven't seen the type of brown block yet. Okay, that opens up with our default blaster. Good to know. And the music. Uh, the music throughout this game is absolutely incredible. Uh, this game was developed by a single person. It was, I believe his name is uh, RV Tekari. Might be pronouncing that correctly incorrectly, but it's close, and a Finnish developer, and I think he got help hired, uh, ooh, that's poison down there, don't want to go down there, now we know green water's bad, and I believe he hired a composer, a sound composer, and a um, sound effects composer. So here we see a another pink glowing save, and that marks a, well, S, I should say, but obviously a save point, because it's the same color as the capsule. It's also the same color as your hit points, and it recharges your hit points, so... And you know, this, this room looks, yep, yep, this room looks kind of fishy. In a standard Metroid game, you want to shoot breakable walls that might look a little fishy. And hey, indeed, what do we get? Nice, a health tank. Increased your hit points by four, that's fantastic. Okay, and so this biomass can be destroyed, but we, uh, looks like we can't go any further. Well, gr very good. We just got four more hit points, that's, that's great. And as soon as I found that secret and I got the health tank upgrade, I knew I was going to fall in love with this game, and I knew this game, I was going to play it to its completion. Because it is, it, you get that Metroid feel. It is so classic, and yet it is so unique. So, this teeny little hump right here, we cannot bypass. So we need to be able to jump higher, or wall jump, or something. Something sort of more verticality our, our character needs to uh, be able to do. So, this is really the last place we can explore. And that's how this game sometimes works. Like, if this place would lead us to a stuck point, I would be stuck. So, hopefully it does not. Leads to some dangers, and I like how these gamers kind of flip up and down. That's kind of a little interesting thing. Could be dangerous, I guess. You gotta, it's a stretch of your little jump here, so gotta watch it. Another health tank? Don't mind if I do. Oh, what? Oh boy. Again, you think they would throw you a boss as soon as you start, and that's enough. But then they, if you go, you will encounter that room if you shoot it before you find the save point. And by extension, before you find the secret health tank upgrade. So you might go and try to collect that item, and you get, you fall into a boss trap. And that's what happened to me. And uh, I love it. And look, you get rewarded with that health upgrade if you beat them. But as we know, we could also just go over here and save. Um, we could have just came from the save point and got that, which is what we did. So what I like is that if you have trouble with this boss, you do have an extra f 
two hit points, because it takes two hit points when you get hit. An extra two hit points to fight him um, if you um, are a little bit vigilant. And being vigilant is very important in this game. Let me just uh, preface with that. Remember that. Stay vigilant. Okay, so we... Uh, I like how when you beat the boss, too, like it's quiet and silent. And you just hear the ambience of the uh, dripping biomass and what I think they need some sort of fluorescent fauna right there. Oh, jeez. Ooh, what is this? Looks like a picture of a shoe. I wonder what it could be. Hmm.